and I don't know that the Cowboys are in any mood to kick to him. And they kicked away from him. And LSU will have the ball right about the 34-yard line. Ron Brooks with a 10-yard return. Stepping into the spotlight, our Toyota quarterback, Jordan Jefferson. He's a junior, and you'll see both quarterbacks play. What does LSU have with him? Well, what Jordan Jefferson brings to the table for this offense is the ability to run the zone read play out of the shotgun. He's very athletic, very good with his feet. He can also throw the football, but he's uh, much more of a runner than Jared Lee is. Jefferson 15-5 and five as a starter. And, of course, a big part of that dramatic win at Florida. And Ridley gets the first carry. He's out across the 40. Steven Ridley, the junior, averaging 106 yards per game, second in the SEC. And a hurry-up offense, no huddle. Jefferson in the shotgun. He'll swing it out. And it's caught there right about midfield by Richard Murphy, the senior. McNeese Gavin defensively, Thomas. some of their key defenders. Lighton, Miner, and Devin Holland is the guy that makes them go. He really is, and he plays the buck safety position in their 4-2-5 defense. And, and what that does, they ask him to do a lot, Rich. They want him to play like a linebacker against the run and also have the ability to cover wide receivers in the passing game. First possession, LSU. Their own 45, Jefferson. The pitch ahead, it's Shepard to the 40. That's a gain of 15. Russell Shepard, very versatile. Yeah, he certainly is. They'll do that a lot with him, and he's a guy they want to get the football to in space. They'll, they'll pitch him the ball, as you see here, on the little option flip play. They'll try to get him the ball in, on reverses, quick screens, those type of things, just to get him out in space where he can use his athletic ability to make big plays for this offense. Michael Ford drops the pitch, loose at midfield, and Ford will fall on it. We will see a lot of tailbacks get time for LSU tonight. You'll see Alfred Blue, Michael Ford, Richard Murphy. We've already seen Stephen Ridley. Yeah, they certainly have a nice stable of running backs they can go to, Rich, at, at any point, and all these guys have their own style of play. You know, Ridley we talked about in the opener is more of a the power runner in between the tackles, and they'll even bring Russell Shepard in the backfield when they want to stretch the defense wide and run off tackle. Sixth year for Les Miles, 57 and 15 here at LSU. Boone in motion. Jefferson in trouble. Deflected and incomplete. And the Cowboys got some pressure on Jordan Jefferson. Our four keys to the game, Mr. Cowan. You know, you take a look, for, for LSU, it's work on the passing game. That is the one question mark that they have on this football team, and tonight would be a great opportunity for them to work a little bit on that. And number two is don't look ahead. Auburn coming in here next week, a huge football game potentially coming in, so don't look past these Nick State Cowboys tonight. Third down and 19, while just in McNeese territory. Jefferson, little quick dump. That's Murphy to the 40. Well shy of the first down. Devin Holland with another stop. It's a gain of nine. Well, just just a just a third and long situation right there. You, you have to expre expect a little pressure. And LSU had a really good play call on there. Just a nice little slip screen or middle screen at over top of the pressure. And and uh, McNeese State Cowboys actually played that pretty well. Fourth down and 10, and you can see Les Miles talking it over with Jordan Jefferson. Jefferson normally gets the first two series of the game, and then we should see Jarrett Lee. Josh Jasper and the punt unit on their way out, and in no real hurry, they'd probably take the five yards, give them a better shot at a corner. I would assume so, yeah. Just go ahead and take the delay of game penalty, give your punter just a little bit more room to kick this thing. Dead ball foul. Way of game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. So the delay will back into the 45-yard line of McNeese State. Delay of the game. Ball is at the 45-yard line. 
Jasper. Is the winner. Josh Jasper. And his own 40 yard line. Ronaldo Young is deep. Young lets it bounce. It's batted from the end zone back to the three. Where will they mark it? It's marked just outside the goal line. And so McNeese State is backed up to their own end zone for their first possession ever here in Baton Rouge. We're underway and scoreless. Always a great scene here in Baton Rouge. 92,000 on hand. They mark the football at the four yard line. That's where the ball was batted and finally touched at the four. And so a red shirt freshman, Cody Stroud, in his own end zone, completes a pass, fires it out to the side. Nice catch by Corday Clark. How in the world can a red shirt freshman walk into this place and perform, Tim? Well, it's going to be tough on him, no question about it, and especially starting down here in your own territory. But what they're going to do for Cody Stroud, in my opinion, is get him started early, Rich. Some, some quick passes, some screens, some bootlegs, some quick slants, those type of things. Just get the football out of his hands quickly so he don't take any sacks. A gain of nine. And a nice cut by Andre Anderson. Anderson across the 20 out to the 21-yard line. McNeese State can move the football. Kamel Hatcher made the stop. They certainly can, and especially Andre Anderson. This kid is a heck of a running back. He's really good in between the tackles in the power running game. Not the fastest of running backs, but very physical with his running style. A last-second loss last week to Southland Conference rival Stephen F. Austin. The Cowboys moved the ball well in that game. Anderson again to the outside. Pushed out of bounds by Kelvin Shepard. And Kelvin Shepard is right in the middle of the best defense in the SEC. Toyota brings you this trio. Drake Nevis, Kelvin Shepard, Patrick Peterson. Find me three better tackle, linebacker, corner combos in the country. I don't think there is. And when you look at Drake Nevis, he's so explosive. He just wreaks havoc on that line. He's quick off the football. He can find the football, and he has excellent speed for a big man. Five sacks also on the year. He can put pressure on the quarterback. An enormous game on the road against the Gators. Second and seven. Blitz is coming. Stroud, quick release. Caught by Anderson to the 30. Short of the first down by three yards, Patrick Peterson made the stop. And so far, so good for the redshirt freshman who, he, when he was young, Cody Stroud, his grandfather used to bring him to this stadium to watch the Tigers. And when reporters this week asked him, have you ever seen anything like it? He said, yeah, I've been here many times. <laughs> well, you know, it's almost one of those deals, Rich, where you're almost too young to know any better, you know. So he thought he was going to be ready for this environment. But I'll tell you what, so far on this first drive, he looks very comfortable and poised in that pocket to me. They're down in two. Low snap, Stroud. Caught right at the stripe. And we'll see where the spot is. And again, he goes to his tight end, the senior out of Baton Rouge, a hometown guy. Corday Clark. You see the pressure coming right here from Drake Nevis right up the middle. He's just going to be hard to handle. He's they, you know, This offensive line for McNeese State is very outsized, and LSU is a lot faster on that front. So they're going to get a lot of pressure. So that's why you see McNeese State using their quick attack passing game. So far, they've been able to keep Nevis away from Cody Stroud. Enough for the first down. McNeese State moving the football from deep in their own territory. Anderson hit at the 33 and spins forward to the 34-yard line. Kelvin Shepard made the stop with more on Cody Stroud. Let's go down below to Jen Hildreth. Rich, you mentioned that uh, he said, well, I've been here before, came here as a fan, kid growing up. Clearly, this is a little different, although you wouldn't know he's handling himself pretty well out there. But I asked him, okay, so you're probably going to have a lot of family and friends here, right? He said, oh, yeah, definitely. I said, well, who are they going to be cheering for? He said, well, my close family, they'll be cheering for McNeese. The rest of them, they'll be cheering for, you know, me and LSU. <laughs> <laughs> little reverse action. Out to the 40, and a nice pickup for McNeese State. 
Deontay Spencer on the reverse. And this is one of the things you want to do when you have an attacking, fast-flowing defense like LSU has, get some misdirection going. As you see here, they run the reverse, trying to get LSU to go one side and hit the thing out the back door on the other. But LSU also has the closing speed, and they can run it down from the backside. Three receiver look on third and short. Anderson got hit and then started back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to be short of the first down by a yard. Andre Anderson is a transfer out of Michigan State. And he's playing because of injuries to Marcus Willits, a knee injury, and to Champlain Babin, an ankle injury. Babin may see time, but for now, it's an Andre Anderson's game. Yeah, as we talked about earlier, Rich, this team has just been killed with, with injuries. They're on their third string running back, as you said, their backup quarterback, and this is the last thing you want when you come into an environment like here at Death Valley. But an impressive first possession to dig out from their own four-yard line and push it out to the 41. You know, and I consider that a win for this big State offense. You know, you're backed up, like you said. Now you've kind of created a little field position. You see here they, they it's take a fake. And it looks like they've got it. Now that's a play that Les Miles <laughs> can admire. Certainly so, and, and you got to like that from McNeese State. They're coming into this game, nothing to lose. They're going to let it all hang out, and, and you know, why not go ahead and try to fake that right now? You've had a good drive. you got a little momentum going offensively. Try to do something to keep your offense out on the field and see if they can get some points on this drive. Brandon Robinson was the up man. The Mad Hatter probably has that one in his playbook. First and ten, McNeese still with the ball. Anderson again. Across the 45, a gain of a yard and a half. Kendrick Adams, Anderson. along with Barkevius Mingo. There's a look at the free safety on special teams. Brandon Robinson out of Texas City, Texas. These guys are having a blast, you know, down here. I used to tell his buddies, hey, man, I just picked up a big first down in uh, Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night. You know, this is great for these kids to get a chance to experience this. Blitz coming, and it forced Stroud to unload early, and it's incomplete. Again, he was looking for his tight end. Corday Clark. And McNeese State is a team, when you talk when you talk to Matt Viator, he, he talked about their passing game. They, they like to throw the football down the field. They like to challenge down the field, but against LSU, you're really not going to be able to do that, especially early when their defensive linemen are fresh and putting pressure. So they're, they're trying to get rid of the football quick, but as the game progresses, look for them to try to get blocked up and take some shots down the field. Viator is also the offensive coordinator. He calls the plays for the Cowboys at their own 45 on third and eight. Blitz is coming. Stroud's in trouble. Steps through it to midfield. Took a good shot right at the 50. Looked like Ron Brooks who came up and got him. Kendrick Adams was there as well. There's a look at Brooks, the junior out of Irving, Texas. Well, this is, this is just a coverage sack. As you see, Cody Stroud has a little bit of time to get rid of the football. Can't find anything. And, and this is a good job by him by just getting all you can get. But at the end of this thing, you want to get down because you're not going to be able to take the type of punishment that this LSU defense can deliver. Well, no fake this time. Ben Bourgeois will kick it. But Peterson won't get his hands on it. And the Cowboys do a nice job of keeping it out of the hands of Patrick Peterson. Scoreless, five and a half left in the first. McNeese State and LSU. Thank you, Fred. Sun setting here in Baton Rouge. Tim, you had a few days like that at Kentucky, rolling up 65 points, huh? We had a few, and I'll tell you, boy, 65 is a lot to hang on the board, especially against a quality football team like Arkansas. Jefferson on an inside handoff to Russell Shepard. He's across the 20, out to the 21-yard line. It's a gain of seven. We've seen Shepard carry the ball three times now. You've just joined us, number nine LSU against McNeese State. An absolutely brutal schedule for LSU, and they have come out of it at 6-0, 4-0 in the SEC, number nine in the country. McNeese State, a very good team out of the Southland Conference. Jefferson play action, hit and drop. Daryl Jenkins 
You take a look at it right here. LSU's trying to take a shot down the field. They see McNeese State in a blitz situation. It's just they couldn't get it blocked up. Missed a couple blocks up on the interior offensive line right there. Or they had an opportunity to take a shot down the field to Terrence Oliver. This is exactly, exactly what Matt Viator was hoping for. That his team can come out, go toe to toe with LSU. 4.20 left in the first quarter. Exactly, Rich. And the longer a team like McNeese State stays in this game, the more confidence and the more they think they belong here. On third down, he goes down again. Loose ball. McNeese has got it at the five. Jeremy Pilot fell on the football. Jace Peterson knocked it loose. And it's first and goal, Cowboys at the LSU five-yard line. Yeah, we just talked about giving a team like McNeese momentum, and now Jordan Jefferson's a little bit confused with the looks that they're giving him, and that's one of the things the coach has been working with Jordan on is realizing where the blitz is coming from. That right there is on the quarterback. That's an extra guy running free. You have to get rid of that football. Find your hot route, and that's what Les is telling him. He's telling him, get rid of the football. Throw the ball to your hot route. Don't hold the ball down in that territory. From the five, Anderson to the three, and that's as far as he gets. Kelvin Shepard in the middle made the stop. Well, this is really something here, McNeese State. Now, these two schools have long and rich traditions, albeit at different levels of college football, the two winningest programs in this state's history. And McNeese State is, is one of the best teams, you know, and like you said, in the SLC, they've won a ton of conference championships. They're no stranger to winning football and playing well. Timeout on the field, and it's McNeese State who takes the timeout. McNeese State, first timeout this half. Second and goal from the three for McNeese State when we return. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by Ford, by Regions Bank, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Geico Insurance. In Baton Rouge tonight, 92,000 stunned right now. McNeese State has the number nine LSU Tigers on their heels. Second and goal from the three for McNeese. Stroud, play action. Little dump pass, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Ronaldo Young coming out of the backfield. Brandon Taylor on the coverage for LSU. And just unfortunate right there for, for Cody Stroud. Had a nice little play call right there, trying to get it to Ronaldo Young in the flats off of play action. Just got tied up by the defensive end, or they had, the, they had some action right there in the flat, possibly a touchdown. Third and goal. Stroud is a red shirt freshman getting the start for McNeese. Has time. Got him in! Touchdown! Damian Dixon! And for Cody Stroud, to come in here to Tiger Stadium, grew like you said, Rich, grew up coming to games here, and to get the opportunity to throw a touchdown pass in Tiger Stadium, he is flying off the field. His feet aren't even touching the ground right now, so he's he's going to be excited over there. Going to have to get him calmed down, but great job by that offense of, of capitalizing on the turnover. Josh Lewis for the extra point, and it's good. They have been waiting for this game for a long time in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Two hours away. It is one of the biggest LSU towns in Louisiana. They are big Tiger fans, but tonight their Cowboys have come in and scored first. Yeah, and you see Cody Dixon sitting strong in the pocket, looking poised, just waiting until his receivers can work open. LSU in just a man to man situation right there. And Damon Dixon beats his man for a big time touchdown and gets McNeese State up 7 to nothing. All set up by the fumble from Jordan Jefferson on the hit by Jace Peterson. Damian Dixon, a sophomore. A lot of these players from McNeese State know a lot of the players from LSU. Talent-rich Louisiana is well represented here tonight. It sure is, and like you said, these guys have 
have played against each other at the high school level, those type of things. So they, they are really thrilled to be out here on the same field, getting the chance to compete with these LSU Tigers. Now the script usually goes for LSU, Jordan Jefferson, first two series. Jarrett Lee gets the third series. Right, and I would think we would see that also, certainly right now, especially with the way the first two drives have gone for that LSU offense. Tigers tried to hide Peterson, and he gets it at the 15. Patrick Peterson has a lane. Peterson up the sideline, out of bounds. Back at the 40-yard line, Patrick Peterson gives LSU great field position. As you can see, that's why they don't want to kick the football to him. He's one of the most explosive, dynamic football players in all of college football. When he gets the ball in his hands, whether it's on a kick return, an interception, whatever it may be, he has the chance to go the distance. 45 yards on the return. And Les Miles, true to form, has Jarrett Lee out there. His first series. The junior out of Brennan, Texas who threw the game-winning touchdown last week against Florida. Going to put it up. Lots of time. Lead to the sidelines. Tolliver, flag is down at the 23. On the coverage, Deron Jackson. And you see the difference in offensive philosophy right away. As soon as Jarrett Lee enters the football game, they're trying to do a, a double move out and up to Terrence Tolliver and take advantage of the way uh, Jarrett Lee can throw the football from the pocket. Ken Williamson, our referee tonight. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot, and the count is automatic first down. I think for Jackson, it was either grab a hold or give up six. Exactly. He was beat on that play. Terrence Tolliver ran a nice out and up route right there. And Jordan, Jordan, uh, Jarrett Lee, I'm sorry, threw a nice pass. Probably would have been complete if it wasn't for the inter interference. So nice job by the defensive back of at least trying to make him drive and, and punch it in that way. From the 25, third possession for LSU. Lee, a quick hit. That's Shepard. Dropped at the 22, gain of four. Jaron Jackson made the stop. Boy, Russell Shepard gets the football in a lot of different places. He does, and you can see, obviously, the game plan tonight is to come in and get Russell Shepard involved. He's one of those guys who's just so dynamic and explosive when he gets the ball in his hands. You just want to try to do as many things as you can to get him the football out in space. Second and seven. Lee, a one-handed grab, incomplete. Terrence Tolliver, if there ever was a question about this guy's hands, he certainly proved it last week against Florida, and watch this catch. He sure did, Rich, and I'll tell you, they, like you said, early in his career, he was criticized here, and that's a catch. He's got control of the ball and one foot down. They're going to replay that. That is an outstanding catch and footwork by Terrence Tolliver. So with two and a half minutes left in this first quarter, McNeese State has scored first on number nine, LSU. Tolliver, a one-handed catch. Remember, the touchdown catch against Florida was replayed as well. Mm -hmm. He was able to get that with two, then transfer it to one. He was, and, and that's what you like to see. He has... He has tremendous ball skills, and he's a, such a big target. The guy's six foot five, 200 pounds, so you can throw it all around him. He's got a huge catching radius, and you see right here, he has control of his body where he can haul that football in way above his head with his left hand nonetheless and get that foot down for a big-time catch. I think the key was he had pinned it to his chest yes. and the foot was still on the ground. Exactly. He certainly looked to me like he had control of that football when that foot tapped down on the ground. And I think this is what Les Miles was 
talking about when he told us, hey, some people see this as a breather. I don't want us to breathe until the end of the game. Exactly, and you can't. And, and when, anytime you're in a game like this where you're obviously a heavy, a huge favorite in the football game, the key is to come out and put the team away early. Now, if you let teams like this hang around, like McNeese, they you know, got a fumble down here and were able to punch it in for a touchdown, those are the last things you want as a head coach. So you want to see your team respond and punch it in on their next possession. We wait on the review. The Tigers now, this may be seen as a breather, but that is over next week because uh, they're on the road against Auburn. Then they get Alabama. They still have Ole Miss and Arkansas on the schedule. Life in the SEC, you know, it never gets any easier. And, you know, you go on the road to Auburn, who just put up 65 points today against Arkansas. But, you know, and it's just going to be a battle. LSU has the best defense in, in the SEC. Auburn, one of the top offenses, certainly with, with Cam Newton and his ability to, to run and pass. So it's going to be a heck of a matchup next week. After further review, video evidence shows that the ball was caught inbounds. Go so Tolliver, another tightrope act. And they're going to mark the football just outside the 10. First and 10 at the 11 yard line. Jarrett Lee's first series, the beneficiary of a 45 yard kickoff return by Patrick Peterson. Ridley tripped, stumbles. To the five. Terrence Freeman made the stop. And that's that's the running style, Stephen Ridley. He's you know he's a physical downhill runner. He he also has the ability to make guys miss, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to run north and south and punish you at the end of the run. On second and four, Ridley again. Hit hard at the five. Close to the first down, Devin Holland, another local guy from Baton Rouge, just introduced himself to Stephen Ridley. And that's the name we're going to call a lot tonight. As we said in the opener, Devin Holland, is his role in this defense really makes this defense go. He has to play like a hybrid position. It's the buck safety in this 4 2 5 where he has to go up and fill the run like he just did on that play. Third and two. Ridley again. Didn't get to the end zone, but may have the first down. Joe Narcisse, along with Holland, on the hit. Well, McNeese State certainly is no pushover on both sides of the ball. No, they're not. They came to play in this football game, and it, and it looks to me like they're certainly not intimidated to be in this environment. And not enough for the first down. It's fourth and inches. Ridley in, touchdown. A Patrick Peterson kickoff return sets up a short scoring drive for the Tigers. Yeah, and, and once they got down there and scored position, they gave it to their workhorse, Stephen Ridley, the second leading rusher in the SEC. It took him four chances to get it in, but he eventually got it to pay dirt. Let me take a look at the touchdown here. It's just it's just power football. It's goal line football, low man wins. And Stephen Ridley takes advantage of some good blocking up front by that powerful LSU offensive line. I don't think there's any question that LSU can run the football in the SEC. And, and many will tell you that to win the SEC, you got to be able to do that consistently. You certainly have to be able to run the football to win a title or win an SEC title. And, but, but you also have to be able to throw the football. You have to be pretty balanced in this league. You can't be one-dimensional defenses in this league are so good if you're just one dimensional they can take that away and make you play to your weaknesses and that probably has been the biggest issue for LSU so far this year even though they're six and oh and number nine in the country it, it, it has and, and that's what teams are going to try to do to this LSU offense when they play 
the bigger, you know, like an Auburn or an LSU, I mean, I'm sorry, Auburn or an Alabama, someone like that, they're going to load that box up and try to take away that LSU running game and put the football game into the hands of these LSU quarterbacks. Bernardo Henry and Malcolm Bronson. Bronson, the top of your screen. Josh Jasper will kick it. We're all even at seven. Bronson at the eight. Across the 25 and out to the 29-yard line. Well, you heard earlier, back in the studios, Fred Hickman talking about the Wendy's texted in. Biggest regular season win under Les Miles. Tim, get your cell phone out. Is it last week? You go back to 2006, the win over Arkansas, the win on the road at Tennessee in 06 or 05 at Alabama. Well, in the college football world, if, what have you done for me lately? I would certainly say a lot of LSU fans would be picking A last week against Florida. Not much space there for Anderson. Andre Anderson, the feature back. Kendrick Adams at the bottom of that pile. Saturday night in Baton Rouge. Final seconds of this first quarter. And if you asked all 92,000 when they walked in this place, if after one it would be even 7-7, I don't think... Well, maybe Matt Viator would have said, yeah. <laughs> Matt Viator is a happy man down there right now. He's happy to let that clock tick away and move on to the second quarter. Tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. Well, how about this? McNeese State has come into Death Valley. And after one, 7-7. Seven, seven. Night sets here in Baton Rouge, a Saturday night, and a big crowd on hand. And look at this, McNeese State against number nine LSU. The Cowboys have forced a turnover. They've moved the football. They've eaten up clock. They've stuck it in the end zone. And it's 7-7. Rich Waltz along with Tim Couch and Jen Hilder. Cowboys with the football at their own 28. Stroud, the red shirt freshman, over the middle, in and out of the hands of his receiver. And that was Bernardo Henry. What do you think so far, this red shirt freshman? I'm impressed with him so far. You know, I'm, I, I like the way he handles himself out on the field, his demeanor, his, his poise in the pocket, the way his huddle presence is, the way he leads his football team. I see nothing but good things in the future for this young man, Cody Stroud. That was not a bad throw. No, it wasn't. It was a good throw. He stood tall in the pocket, especially rolling to his left, which is hard to do for a right-handed quarterback to flip those hips and hit that crossing route coming back across the field. All along the backfield, blitz comes. He unloaded, but his wide receiver looked like Ronaldo Young did not pick up the blitz himself. No, he didn't, and, and it looked like that Cody Stroud was expecting him to run just a quick hitch out there. Ronaldo Young, a running back, you know, obviously, well, the coach thought, you know, Ron, the coach thought that Ronaldo Young was right. Ronaldo was running the slant. Cody threw the hit. Just a little miscommunication between those two young men. Danger waits at the 28. Patrick Peterson, bourgeois, a wobbly kick, and it bounces. It may have hit a tiger. It's picked up, dead at the 38. It could be McNeese's ball. You can't advance it if it did hit. And the officials will try to sort it out. Whose football is it? Certainly looked like that it hit an LSU player. We'll have to take a look here as he was being engaged in a block. And, and it's McNeese State's yeah, ball. Definitely hit an LSU player. McNeese State catches a huge break in this football game. Ronnie Vinson picks it up. And was recovered by the Cowboys. And you can see Smitsky recovered the ball. It hits Spencer Ware on the special teams. And so the second turnover, Les Miles told us yesterday, we need to clean some things up. And that's not happening. It hasn't happened so far. And, you know, I'm certain, sure Les Miles is certainly very upset on that sideline. 
And now LSU has to take a timeout. Timeout. LSU. So two turnovers now. And we'll take a timeout. 7 7, McNeese State and LSU. SEC College Football Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. The story here tonight in Baton Rouge, turnovers. Spencer Ware on the punt return team had one bounce off his pads. That was the second. This was the first. A great hit by Jace Peterson. Jeremy Pilot scooped it up. That set up the first McNeese score. And there's a good hustle play by the special teams of uh, McNeese State and Matt Viator, whose father was a coach at McNeese State, also a quarterback. His Cowboys have come in and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with number nine LSU and Andre Anderson with a spinning run to the 33-yard line. Andre Anderson running the football very effectively here tonight when we talked to John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for LSU. One of the names that he mentioned he was worried about on this McNeese State offense was Andre Anderson, a transfer from Michigan State. Kid can flat out run the football in between the tackles. His father, Nolan, a quarterback at McNeese State, also a coach, and Vitor, an offensive coordinator, now in his fifth year. Blitz coming. Anderson hit, sheds. Kendrick Adams, and that's not easy to do. And Anderson with a nice pickup. With more on Anderson, let's head down below to Jen Hildreth. Two things Andre Anderson really brings into this game for McNeese are confidence, and also he's had experience playing in big environments, having played at Michigan State and in the Big Ten. And he told me last spring he had decided he was going to transfer from Michigan State, so he was not on a team. He had to do everything on his own, from weights to workouts to drills. He said he really had to develop a lot of independence and a quiet confidence that he feels has helped him get better this season. Play clock running down, third down two, Stroud steps up, got the first down and more, he's 20, Stroud slides down at the 12, avoids a hit, first down McNeese State. And once again, continue to be impressed by Cody Stroud in his play. For such a young football player with hardly any, any experience, come in an environment like this and to have the wherewithal about himself to not... When, when he can't find an open receiver to tuck that football, find a running lane. You see him covering that football up with two hands. Now, you want to go feet first right there so you don't take the big shot at the end of that. But all good fundamentals displayed by Cody Stroud. Anderson inside the 10. Andre Anderson with a gain of maybe two. Kelvin Shepard made the stop. Again, McNeese State out of the Southland Conference, playing up a division, and playing in the den of number nine LSU. These two-story programs, the winningest programs in this state, have never met. And here are the Cowboys knocking on the door again. Second and nine. Stroud gets rid of it quickly. Caught, it's Clark to the six. And, and that's a play that they're really good at, this McNeese State offense, the bootleg. They, they do such a good job of running the football, especially in this game with Andre Anderson. They do a little play fake right there, get the defensive bite on that tight end, will block for a second, block for a count, then release his man, then take off to the flat, just dump it over the defensive end's head right there and pick up a nice game. Third and five from the six. Crowd, end zone, dropped, wow. Right through the hands of Wes Briscoe. And on comes the field goal unit. And just unfortunate, once again, Cody Stroud makes a nice read, throws a nice football. That's a very catchable ball in the end zone. When you get an opportunity to make those type of plays in a big game like this, you just have to come down with them. Josh Lewis, a sophomore, and a good one. You can see six of seven. This from 23. 
and he nails it. Two turnovers have turned into 10 McNeese State points. And the Cowboys in the second quarter on top of number nine, LSU. Thank you, Fred. We'll see you at halftime. What a start this has been in Baton Rouge. Patrick Peterson, one of the best return men in the country, and they're trying to get him the football, Tim. How do they do it? Well, they hide him. As you see him right here, he's kind of in a mix of all these guys, so McNeese don't really know where to go to kick this football to keep it away from him. So excellent job of deception there by the LSU return team. And they kick away from him successfully. That one brought out to the 44-yard line. Greg Lawson. All right, McNeese State is in Lake Charles. It's about two hours away. Look at the enrollment, only 8,600. They play at the uh, football championship series level, and they're a very good program. They have won three of the last four Southland Conference titles. Matt Viator and his Cowboys, a 10-7 lead. Jarrett Lee, his second series at quarterback for LSU. Quick pop, and that one is dropped. A terrific one-handed catch by Tolliver on the touchdown drive. But that one was just a flat drop. And that's, and that's kind of what's plagued him just a little bit throughout his career. He's, he's got the big play potential, had some drops here and there, but he's something he's been working very, very hard on, getting more consistent catching the football. Richard Murphy out of the backfield. He makes the catch and makes a Cowboy miss at midfield to the 47-yard line of McNeese State. Shy of the first down, London Durham made the stop. Our telecast tonight presented in High Definition by H. H. Gregg. Always a great place to be on a Saturday night in college football. Baton Rouge and McNeese State is enjoying their first trip in. Ridley over the 45, down to the 41. First down, Tigers. Let's check in down below with Jen Hildren. Ridley with that last carry. Look at both of his feet when you guys get a chance to. He's got both of his ankles taped up on the outside of his shoes. They did that last time off the field. Quick pop. And up the sidelines, Russell Shepard. Gain of about eight. There's Ridley and his feet. In, in those ankles re taped he's running right out of his shoes. Apparently, they got to tape him to it, and he's been running the football so hard. But, uh, you know, I want to go back to the kickoff right there. You know, I know they're not kicking the football to Patrick Peterson, but you see how he influences field position. It's very hard for this defense to start. LSU gets a drop ball on the 50 yard line. It's hard to stop him on a short field like this. Ridley again to the 30 before he's hit. Joe Narcisse and Darren Miner on the stop. We've been impressed with McNeese State's offense. Their defense has played well. Defense has played well. You know, the thing you worry about with LSU's offensive line being so much more big and physical is it taking a toll on it as the game goes on. Blitz coming. Good read. It's Shepard. And he's out at the 11. Jarrett Lee, a quick pop to Russell Shepard, 17 yards. And, and one of the things they really, really like about Jarrett Lee is his quick release. You see how quick that football comes out of his hands. He's not, he doesn't have the strongest arm as far as chunking the ball deep down the field, but he's very, very accurate on his short to intermediate throws. First and 10. Lee. Right on the sideline and right at the 10, it's a short pickup. Spencer Ware made the catch. And that time, just, just a tad late by Jared Lee getting rid of that football, getting it out of his hand a little late, but also you'd like to see your, your receiver, Jared Lee, hook up on the sideline instead of letting his momentum carry him out of bounds. If he could have hooked that thing up, stopped his momentum, he could have caught the football and turned north and south to get a few extra yards on that play. Ridley, big hole. And he's in. Touchdown. A 10-yard run. And the Tigers take the lead. Well, a little extra.
good tape on the ankles didn't slow him down. <laughs> didn't slow him down a bit. He still continues to run the football very physically. Couple touchdowns on the board now for LSU. They retake the lead. Steven Ridley from 10 yards. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by O'Charlies, by Toyota, by the United States Postal Service, and by Hass Avocados. In Baton Rouge, where McNeese State came in and socked the Tigers in the mouth, but a 10-7 lead has turned into a 14-10 LSU lead. The Tigers getting a 10-yard run from Stephen Ridley. We talked about Ridley getting his ankles taped. While we were away, the uh, sideline staff and the training staff was looking at his shoulder. And that's the last thing you want to see if you're an LSU fan. This kid has been very, very productive so far this season. You don't want to see him have any type of injury. Malcolm Bronson from the three. Bronson to the 25. Let me check in down below with Jen Hildreth. Jen? Let's see how this LSU defense responds because the last time they came off the field after that drive by McNeese where they had the field goal, boy, these guys got it. They got it from a lot of different sources. The defensive line sat down. I don't think they got stopped yelling out for about five minutes, really, from their defensive line coach, Brick Haley. And Kelvin Shepard could barely sit down. He was going around talking to everybody. To some, he offered encouragement. To others, he said, come on, let's go. You need to do better than that. So we'll see if the LSU D comes out and does a little better now. Cowboys with a football, Stroud. Anderson, I think everybody on that Tiger defense is happy that defensive coordinator John Chavis is upstairs and not downstairs. <laughs> well, certainly so. John Chavis is a very fiery guy, and you can't get to him from up in that booth. But, you know, that's what you want to see. Kel guys like Kelvin Shepard take, take control of their football team. You want to see it be a player-led team, and Kelvin Shepard stepping up in that role big time. Uh, they may be able to feel his glare from all the way up here. On second down, Stroud standing tall and overthrowing his receiver at the sideline. He was looking for Corday Clark. Now, when you were at Kentucky, that man was at Tennessee, and he had a nice run at Tennessee as their defensive coordinator. Are the defenses similar, his Tennessee defenses and this LSU defense? It hadn't changed at all. Only the personnel has changed really for John Chavis. He's, he has a proven system in the SEC. Like you said, he was at Tennessee for so many years, had a chance to play against him three times, and what he likes to do is put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. It's not very confusing as far as what he does, but they will get in your face, bump and run outside in the corners, and make your wide receivers win one-on-one -on -one routes. Third and seven, blitz coming, down goes Stroud. Backside hit, Ryan Baker. And there you see, just like we just mentioned, he likes to be aggressive with his defense. He likes to bring pressure, lock his corners up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Ryan Baker just gets a clean shot at the quarterback. And again, that's on Cody Stroud. That's his youth. He doesn't see the free, the free blitzer coming right there. When a guy, you have to, you know, you count how many guys you have to block, how many are they rushing, and then the free rushers on the quarterback. Remember, a turnover on the last punt. Peterson up to get it and made the catch and paid the price. I think he's just frustrated that they're not <laughs> kicking to him. He had to go get it. LSU football with a 14-10 lead in Baton Rouge. Well, you can see the two LSU quarterbacks, Jared Lee on the left, and there's Jordan Jefferson. They both have had a chance to run this team, and both of Lee's series have resulted in touchdowns, and it looks like Jefferson is back out there. Yeah, and, and they're going to continue to rotate these guys. They just feel like they have the right mixture with these guys where they can bring in a Jordan Jefferson and totally switch up what they do offensively, you know, go to more of their zone read type option stuff. And you see the production of Jarrett Lee, not only this game, but the last two weeks. They've counted on him when the game was on the line. And that's a real telling shot watching those two together. You and I were on the field before the ball game. Both of those guys did all of their quarterback drills together, and that's not common when you have 
a two quarterback guys fighting for one spot. It's not, and that's certainly a great thing for this football team. You know, the guys always look to the quarterback, see how they're going to respond in situations. They see those two guys being team players. It goes all throughout the football team. LSU great field position. They're on 46. Ridley out to the 48. Time now for our Napa Auto Parts know-how. Not since 1973 has LSU gone 7-0. A chance to do it tonight. Next week on the road at Auburn. Ridley to midfield and he pushes into Cowboy territory to the 47-yard line. Well, the Tigers have had an interesting route to 6-0. Of course, the, uh, the last second wins a break against North Carolina. They beat West Virginia by six. A two-point win on, on a second chance against Tennessee. And, of course, the thrilling win on the road against Florida last week. Third down, four. Jefferson, plenty of time. Scrambles. Hit, stopped short of the first down. Devin Holland, Jeremy Pilot made the stops. And I'm again, I continue to be impressed with the McNeese State Cowboys offensively and defensively. It's a time right now, they just lost their lead. They're down, they're up, down 14 to 10. LSU has good field position with an opportunity to, to grow that lead. Their defense comes out and makes the stand they have to get and gets the football back to their offense. Ronaldo Young is deep. Josh Jasper to punt it. And a good high spiraling kick is down right at the two. Good special teams work. Ron Brooks, 45 yards on the punt. Next week, South Carolina in Nashville against Vanderbilt. It's our game, the SEC College Football Saturday. Vanderbilt really struggled today. Marcus Lattimore and South Carolina trying to stay on a roll. Yeah, Mar Marcus Lattimore has just made such a huge difference to that South Carolina football team, taking a lot of pressure off quarterback Stephen Garcia, giving him another weapon to go along with those great wide receivers they have there at South Carolina. Backed up to their own end zone. Anderson is hit. That may be a safety. It is. Drake Nevis. Nevis, who had four and a half tackles for loss in a monster game against Florida, comes up with a safety here. And yeah, once again, he, he, he spends a lot of his time behind the line of scrimmage making plays. Like you said, Rich, tackles for a loss, 10 and a half of those on the season, now 11 and a half. He's making plays all over the football field, so explosive getting off the line of scrimmage. So LSU is going to get the football back. It was Glenn Dorsey, the great tackle here at LSU, that when he saw Drake Nevis said, he's the next big thing. I couldn't agree with him more. You know, and anybody that watches this guy play football, his passion for the game, his, the coaches talk about his leadership qualities. You know, he, he's the kind of guy that will step up in a meeting and say what has to be said, challenge guys, get guys to rise up to his level, and that's what you want out of your superstar defensive lineman. And many feel he'll be a superstar at the next level as well. I certainly think so. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be. So McNeese State has the option to either kick it off the tee or punt it. And it looks like Ben Bourgeois may have a little bit more success at keeping it away from Peterson. But it's Peterson at the 40 in traffic. Peterson. And he sits down at the 46-yard line, 18 yards on the return. It was a Peterson kickoff return that set up LSU's first score. He's fun to watch, and you know the hard part about Peterson 
is that he doesn't see a lot of balls his way defensively. He really has had to sparkle on special teams. He has, and, and he's going to have to do that all year long. No one is going to go into the game making their game plan saying, you know what, I think we're going to pick on Patrick Peterson tonight. So he's not going to see much action, but when they do throw to his side, he makes plays. Now it's Jarrett Lee at quarterback. The pitch, Michael Ford. Back to the line of scrimmage. Fred Hickman is standing by. The Toyota halftime report scores highlights from a wild day in the SEC. Wait till you see the Auburn Arkansas highlights. Sad to say for Tim Couch, South Carolina, a 28 17 lead over Kentucky in the third quarter. Yeah, not looking good for the Wildcats. You know, they just ran into a, uh, a hot South Carolina football team coming off that huge win against Alabama last week, playing with a lot of momentum. 65 points for Auburn against Arkansas. And you got to know, I know that LSU is playing a game tonight, but there have got to be a few players <laughs> and most of the 92,000 here that have taken a look at that score and said, oh, my goodness, <laughs> that's next week for LSU. Third and eight. Lee short hops his receiver, and it's incomplete, and the Cowboy defense holds at midfield. Yeah, the Cowboy defense playing well tonight, and, and it's a little bit sloppy, you know, for the LSU offense. It hadn't been crisp, and I know they wanted to come out here and, and make plays and just be, be, be crisp. You know, throw the football, catch the football, hold on to it, don't, don't fumble, don't make... You know, pump, uh, penalties, silly penalties, those type of things that you see Les Miles having a conversation with Jarrett Lee there about what happened. It looked like the football just kind of slipped out of his hand as he was trying to maybe rush that throw a little bit. It's a fake. Jasper still has it. And the riverboat gambler, the Mad Hatter, has pulled another one out of his bag of tricks. <laughs> You never know what you're going to see with a Les Miles coach football team, do you? Jasper, of course, picked up the crucial first down against Florida. And look at Jasper, the way he just holds on to this football. McNeese Tate thinks the ball has been punted already. He just holds on, lets everybody run down the field, and he, he has a little bit of speed for a punter and gets that first down. Now, does he have the option to do that, or is that by design right away? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. It looked to me like it looked like he had an option to do it. He had to see how the defense was reacting, and if they were if rushing the punter, he was going to kick it. If they backed off, he was going to tuck it and run. Well, right now, the officials are talking. 424 left in this first half. LSU on top of McNeese State, but it has not been easy for the Tigers. We have two dead ball fouls on the play. False start, offense number 80. We also have a sideline interference call against the visiting team. Both fouls are five yards. The net will be the ball, be right where it is. First down. Wow. So a real break for LSU on the sideline interference on McNeese's sideline. Sure that would have wiped out. That fake punt. From the 34, Ridley. Good penetration. And a good hit by Darren Miner. Here's another look at that fake punt. And, and as you mentioned, Rich, I think this is an option. As you see the punter look, just looking at the defense, he sees everyone turn their back and run down the field thinking the ball has been kicked. So he just waits until they just continue to run, continue to run, and he makes a play and got the big first down for LSU. Second down, 10. Lee with time. Got a man. It's caught Shepard at the 25. Short of the first down. They'll actually mark it at the 26. Seth Thomas on the coverage. It's going to bring up a third down and short. 
And a good timing throw right here by Jarrett Lee out to his man, Russell Shepard. It's, it's an outbreaking route with a flat defender on it. You have to throw that ball. You can't throw it on the line or the defender can jump up and tip it. So he throws it with a nice flat arc where it drops in over the defender and under the safety. How do you grade both quarterbacks so far? Well, it's been a, it's been a tough start for Jordan Jefferson, obviously, with, with, the, uh, with the fumbles and a couple sacks already in this football game. But Jared Lee has his football team moving and looks like he has good rhythm to this offense. Third down and three. Lee's going to keep it to the 20. And that's a gain of seven and a first down. First down for the Tigers. For Jared Lee, it's... You feel happy for a kid like this who's battled through a lot in his career here at LSU. He was, he was booed by the fans a lot when he threw a ton of interceptions early in his career. He got really down on himself mentally. He's battled back from that and earned the respect of his teammates the way he has persevered through all that. And now you see him getting quality playing time and winning football games like he has the last two weeks for LSU. Ridley, again behind the line of scrimmage and he'll lose a yard Daryl Jenkins how much of that how much of the the rebirth of, of Jarrett Lee is the nurturing from Les Miles I think quite a bit you know I think Les understands what Jared has been through in his career mentally and he wants to put him in situations where he can come in and have success you know you don't want to put him in that's why you see kind of the two quarterback system in my opinion right now is he wants to bring Jared in spots where he can be successful and lead this football team and it's just such so good for his confidence as you can see he's he's playing with confidence and when he enters the game more importantly his teammates play with confidence Tigers going to take a timeout with a minute 46 left in this first half a six-point lead over McNeese State. Well, the, Tigers. Well, the Tigers will talk it over. And as we get closer to halftime, McNeese has played well here in the first half. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Fritz want to tell you about tonight's Regents Bank Scholar Athlete from LSU. Fullback Richard Dugas is a walk-on who made the transition from offensive line to fullback last year. He has a 3.2 GPA. His major is business management, and he's been a member of the SEC Academic Honor Roll the last three years. Now, here's where it gets kind of interesting. His dad, Robert, was a first-team All-American offensive lineman for the Tigers in 1978, and that same year, he became LSU's first national scholar athlete. So, brains running the family apparently out of Lincoln Nebraska LSU off the timeout faced with second down and 11 and the 21 yard line of McNeese State Stephen Ridley is behind Jarrett Lee Cowboys show blitz lots of movement Ball foul, offside on the defense, number 55. The defensive player moves into the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five yard penalty, it remains second down. And a good job by Jarrett Lee. You see him using his little head nod there and a uh, little voice inflection. He had he, he had changed his count, it looked like. He'd been going on a count, certain count the whole game. That time switched up and got a lot of movement on that Lee State defensive line. And a heads up play by Josh Dorosic, the left guard. Once he saw movement, Dorosic went ahead and touched the McNeese player and another whistle dead ball foul offside defense number 99 the defensive player moves into the neutral zone causing the offensive player to react five yard penalty remains second down Chris Loveless and so just like that, LSU picks up 10 yards. <laughs> That's a way to pick up 10 yards. You know, just using your voice inflection and a little head nod, easy way to pick up 10. So second and 11 becomes second and one. Ridley can't bounce it outside. Great stop by Malcolm Bronson, the sophomore out of Jasper, Texas. This is a very good tackling team. They are a very good tackling team, and they've made tackles all over the field, and especially you see them tackling in space, which is what you wouldn't expect. You know, you think LSU would have the speed to get on the edge and, and outrun this McNeese State defense, but they've shown they have a lot of team speed on that side of the football. Close to the first down. Chains are coming across. 
hang with us. Fred Hickman will be by at halftime. All the uh, highlights from a wild day of college football. <coughs> Nebraska upset by Texas. And that's good news for LSU. Good news for the rest of the SEC. Short of the first down and a change at quarterback. Third down. Jordan Jefferson. It is third down and less than a yard. There's a look at Jefferson. This is the first time that LSU has changed in the middle of a series. And now McNeese State is going to call a timeout with a minute 30 left. Well, I think you got to be pretty happy if you're Matt Viator. His Cowboys have come in here and uh, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with number nine and represented the Southland Conference quite well. They sure have, and, and especially if you look at how they came in here. So many injuries. You know, I know Coach Viator was, was really worried about how his team would be able to compete, you know, with LSU with all the injuries they've had. But uh, they have came in, and some guys have stepped up in places where some guys have been injured and showed that they can play as well, and, and they've, they've played really, really well here in this first half, tackling all over the football field, making plays on offense. So out of the timeout, Les Miles going with Jordan Jefferson. Ridley in the ball game behind that massive, talented offensive line. Alex Hurst, Josh Williford, P.J. Lonergan, Garasik. And Jefferson will keep it. Flags are down. Lots of flags are down. One in the backfield and two at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Terrence Tolliver came running on the field late. Illegal motion on the offense, number 80. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. That is not a formation that is in the bag of tricks <laughs> of the Mad Hatter. <laughs> no, it's not. And, and for, for LSU, you just want to leave him on the sideline. You know, you don't even need him out there. You run, you're you're running the quarterback sneak as you can see him coming onto the field right here as he runs on and just not set before they snap that football as you get the illegal motion. So this not only changes the down and distance, it changes the quarterbacks. It's back to Lee. Shotgun Lee. Oh, almost picked off. And it's incomplete. Seth Thomas stepped in front. And LSU is going to have to settle for a field goal. I'll tell you, and they're lucky that they get to settle for a field goal because Seth Thomas saw this all the way and broke on it. And if he catches that, he's still running. And that's seven points for McNeese State. Josh Jasper with Derek Helton holding. The last time these two hooked up it was that magical play in Gainesville. He missed it. He missed it. And McNeese State holds. How about that? And you see the elation on the McNeese State sideline. They, they certainly got a win there. And then obviously a disappointment on Les Miles' face. He's in a second and inches situation where all he has to do is run a quarterback sneak and keep this drive alive. They get the illegal motion penalty, and then you come back and miss the field goal and get no points on that drive. Lack of focus. That's something that Les Miles talked to us about and lectured his team on. He said that the Tigers had a very good week of practice. The Tigers have just one timeout left here in the first half. Tigers had a very good week of practice, and Miles felt there would be no letdown against McNeese State. Yeah, he talked to us, you know, in our meetings this week, and he said that, you know, like you said, they had a great week of practice. He expected them to come out and play a clean football game, no penalties, you know, no things like that, and, and they've not done that. They've turned the football over and had several bad mental errors. And the Cowboys happy just to run the clock and get in the locker room down by six to the number nine team in the country. Stroud takes a knee, and that will be the final snap of what is a rather surprising first half here in Baton Rouge. In Death Valley, Matt Viator and the McNeese State Cowboys come to town for the very first time 
They take a lead. They have a big defensive stop to finish the half. And at halftime, the number nine team in the country, LSU, has just a six-point lead, 16-10 over McNeese State. And 92,000 are rather quiet and quite honestly stunned right now. Let's go down below to Jen. Coach Miles, a six-point lead for your team. What has gone according to plan, and what needs to be fixed heading into the second half? Well, we've uh, we played sloppy. You know, it's uh, you know we got a little greedy and you know threw a pass that uh, possibly we shouldn't have thrown late or early in the uh, in the uh, you know in, in the game and gave them an opportunity at a you know turnover and an easy score. Need to manage that a little bit better. Um, we're running the football well, we're moving the football on offense. You know, we had a uh, special teams fupa where a guy, you know, gets hit. You know, now the second half, we got to play like we play. All right, thanks, Coach. LSU, number nine in the country, but McNeese State doesn't care. It's been quite a half. 16 10, Tigers. For number nine, LSU, but not so in the first half. Redshirt freshman Cody Stroud with a touchdown pass. It's a six-point ball game. Rich Waltz along with Tim Couch. And it seems like the Cowboys have followed the leadership of their redshirt freshman quarterback. They sure have. They've taken right off of what Cody Stroud, his poise, his leadership that he's brought into this football game. And as we take a look at, at the highlights of what he's done, they've, they've converted some points off of turnovers. A sloppy play by LSU. As you see Jordan Jefferson taking a big shot in the back here, fumbling the football in his own territory. Cody Stroud takes advantage and throws a touchdown right there to put his team on the board. But on the ensuing kickoff, Patrick Peterson doing what he does best with making explosive plays in the return game, setting up his offense to score again right there and get LSU back into the football game. All right, our Regents Bank game summary. Not a lot of offense on either side. The turnover's big. The defense for LSU actually played pretty well in this one. But the Les Miles not happy with the turnovers and certainly not happy with a six-point lead over McNeese State. And the Cowboys of McNeese State are going to get the football to start this second half. And away we go. Malcolm Bronson at his five. Bronson breaks a tackle across the 30 and to the 31-yard line. And before the teams took the field, Jen Hildreth caught up with McNeese head coach Matt Viator. Coach Viator, you've got to be pleased with the performance of your team in the first half. What have you guys done well so far? Well, I think we're playing really hard. I mean, our guys are really competing. We're playing good on defense, and uh, we've actually made a few plays on offense, but it's just, you know, they're so good on defense. I mean, it's hard to make plays against what they do, but uh, we're hanging in there, and we get the ball to start the second half, and hopefully we can make a couple plays and really get in this. What's the key to doing that? What's the key to taking that next step. We have to be able to move the football, and that's uh, that's the biggest key for us. We get the opening uh, kickoff in the second half. We have to get first downs, try to keep their offense off the field, and uh, and stay on the field more with our offense. All right, thank you. Well, Deontay Spencer on a little reverse look. And McNeese State has the football out across the 33-yard line. Second down now for the Cowboys. Cody Stroud, the redshirt freshman. Did not have an overwhelming first half. He was 5 of 11 for 22 yards, but an effective first half. He ran the team well. He showed poise. Nice catch out of the backfield. Anderson spins away from the tackle to the 38. You see the skill sets right there of Anthony Anderson. We know about his physicality in the running game between the tackles, but he also showed right there he can catch the football out of the backfield. Transfer from Michigan State. Stroud out of Montgomery, Alabama. His grandfather used to bring him 
to this stadium to watch the Tigers when he was growing up. So a real treat as a redshirt freshman to walk in in front of 92,000. And so far, so good. Third down three. Blitz is coming. Stroud, a quick read and a nice throw caught at the 43-yard line. Corday Clark, favorite target of Stroud. That's the fourth catch for Clark. And that's the, that's the little things you see out of a Cody Stroud. He sees the blitz coming right here. What you want to do when you get a blitz, you want to throw to that side. You want to attack where they're blitzing from. Good pickup, good recognition by Cody Stroud, and also get the football out of his hands quickly. Anderson on an inside handoff. He is a very good runner inside the tackles. Found Anderson himself out Gary. to the 46. Kelvin Shepard. And... Chancey Aguilieri made the stop. The quiet leader of LSU's defense, the man in the middle, Kelvin Shepard. Yeah, Kelvin is the quiet leader. He leads more by example, but there's times like in the first half when he thinks his team needs it, he will get in people's face and challenge them to step up their level of play. The other leader, Drake Nevis. And you could say the same about Patrick Peterson, the lockdown corner. They have not thrown his way much tonight. A lot of traffic on the uh, receiving end of that throw. Bernardo Henry and Morris Claiborne broke it up. Claiborne, along with Peterson, are the lockdown corners, and it also helps when you've got a Drake Nevis. Yeah, it does, and it's just a screen pass right there. The offensive line, you want him to at least get a hand on Drake Nevis right there. You don't want him to let him come scotch free, and he was able to get a little pressure and make Cody Stroud throw that football before he was ready. Base with a third down and seven. Four of nine tonight. Blitz on the way. Stroud's in trouble and down he goes. Ryan Baker. And the LSU defense, who played well in the first half. They did stop here to open the second. They did play well, and they're starting to put a little bit more pressure in the second half, you can see on Cody Stroud. I think the game plan when they come back out of the locker room at halftime was, let's put some pressure on this kid and make him make some quick decisions and see if we can cause a turnover or two in the second half. Cowboys kicked away from Peterson, but he's going to get this one at the 18. Peterson gets wide, breaks a tackle, 35, 40, Peterson, midfield. Another big return, 33 yards. One of the most electric players in all of college football, a lockdown corner and a holy terror as a return man. Patrick Peterson gives LSU great field position to start the second half. SEC College Football Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. In Baton Rouge, first possession now for LSU in the second half, 16-10. Number nine, Tigers on top of McNeese State. Two quarterbacks have played. Jordan Jefferson gets this first series. And he'll pitch it out to Michael Ford inside the 40. Ford has a pickup of 11. And it's a first down for LSU. Tim Couch, Jordan Jefferson, Jarrett Lee. How did the first half go for both? Well, for Jordan Jefferson, it was a struggle in the first half. You know, he threw the football fairly accurately, but he had, you know, this couple sacks, and he had the fumble down there in his own territory. For Jarrett Lee, I just felt like when he came into the game, the offense was in a little bit better rhythm, a little bit better tempo, as he was able to move the team up and down the field and get two touchdowns. Jefferson going deep. Tolliver incomplete. Seth Thomas, who made a big defensive stop late in the first half, the sophomore out of Orange, Texas, on the coverage. 
We see LSU just taking a shot right there to their playmaker, Terrence Tolliver. You get one-on-one -on -one situation with your big six-foot-five wide receiver, but you see the inaccuracy of that deep throw. When you get a play like that, the middle of the field's wide open. You want to throw the ball across the field, let your wide receiver run to it, not throw it back on this side of the hash mark where the DB has a chance to break it up. Second and ten. Straight ahead. Spencer Ware on the carry. Terrence Freeman and Jeremy Pilot made the stop. And this is going to turn into a third down and about nine. Funny thing is, the strength for Jefferson is running the ball. And LSU has done very little of that when he's been in the game. They haven't done much of it. And, you know, I'm certainly McNeese State knows that as well. So they're probably doing a, some type of scheme that they're doing to keep him bottled up within, within that pocket. Jefferson rolling and throwing down the sideline. Out of bounds was Shepard. He comes back in, and it's incomplete. Devin Holland. A guy we've seen in the backfield of LSU made that play down at the 15-yard line. There's a look at Holland, number one. And that's what we've talked about with Devin Holland. His role in this defense is to do exactly that. We've seen him make plays, tackling for a loss in the backfield, making plays as a run stopper, and there he has to cover um, Russell Shepard down the sideline, one of the fastest players on LSU's defense, and he did an excellent job of doing that. Well, the McNeese State defense has played very well. And now LSU looking at fourth down and nine. Both teams ran fake punts successfully in the first half. They did. You know, a little, uh, you know, you can expe expect something like that from a McNeese State, but you don't think that LSU in a game like this would have to fake a punt to have success. But that's kind of the credit to the way McNeese is playing. Of course, as we watched it, Josh Jasper, the punter, it looked like he simply looked up and saw nobody coming at him and just tucked it and ran and picked up the first down. It did, and that certainly could have been just a heads-up play by the punter. You know, I don't know what was called in the huddle, but uh, whatever the case may be, he did an excellent job of converting that for a first down. Well, McNeese is not sending anybody deep. They want to make sure he kicks it. He does. And it's into the end zone. The Cowboys are going to get it at their own 20-yard line. 10-20 left, third quarter. Real surprise here. McNeese State has come into Death Valley and taken it to the number nine Tigers. Six-point lead for LSU. Yeah, Fred, he just did a cartwheel in the booth. <laughs> that brought a Baton smile to my face, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of college football on tonight, but if you're watching this ball game, this is quite a story here. McNeese State down by only six here in the third quarter. Andre Anderson dances out to the 25. There's a flag down behind the play in what looks like a hold, and it is. That wipes out a five-yard pickup. Matt Vieter, the uh, head coach at McNeese State, is just 47. Holding on the offense, the 74, 10 yard penalty, first down. Marcus Bello, the right tackle. Those type of penalties are the last thing that an offense like McNeese State can can have against a defense like LSU. You know, you can't, you got to stay on schedule offensively. You have to keep yourself in manageable situations. Now you find yourself in a first and 20 backed up on your own 10 yard line. At what point do they take a shot with Bernardo Henry, their best speed the guy on the outside? They have to at some point during this football game. He is a guy who's a 4 3 40 type guy. Hadn't had a shot down the field yet. At some point in this game, they're going to do that with him. Problem is, he's had Patrick Peterson on him all night. And there is. Henry in front of Peterson and he can't hold it. Great speed doesn't help you if you don't have good hands. High definition tonight brought to you by H.H. Gregg, Rich Waltz, Tim Couch, Jen Hildreth, Jay Hoover is our producer, Rick LaCivita our director, Bill Cochran our associate producer here in Baton Rouge in a game in which all 92,000 who walked into the place felt was going to be a fun night, a breather, 
for this Tiger team at number nine in the country, and it hasn't gone that way. It hasn't. This Monique State team right in this thing right here as we go through almost halfway through the third quarter. Second and 20. Draw. Anderson hit from behind and dropped. And Les Miles set out his goals yesterday about this ball game. Special teams wanted to get better. Mistakes and turnovers wanted to clean them up. Quarterback play wanted to get consistency, and I don't think he's had any of those things happen tonight. He hasn't had any of those things happen, and I know he's probably really surprised that he hadn't because he talked to us about how good a week of practice they had, and he expected this team to come out and play a lot better than this for sure. It's a third down and 17. Stroud, the redshirt freshman. Swings it to the sidelines. Chris Royal, his first catch. And Royal across the 15. Out to the 18-yard line. Tyron Matthew. And if you're McNeese State, that's okay. You know, you got yourself off schedule with that holding penalty. You got yourself in a first and 20 situation in your own territory. The thing that Cody Stroud hasn't done tonight is he hasn't hurt his football team with turnovers which you would expect him to do being a, a redshirt freshman quarterback playing against this defense. He hadn't done that yet tonight. Bourgeois gets it away. Reed is back with Peterson. And this kick is going to sail over the Cowboy bench. And LSU is going to have great field position to start another drive here in the third, up by only six. Third quarter in Death Valley, number nine LSU having troubles tonight against McNeese State. Keys to the game for LSU. How have they done? Not very good. You know, they came into this game certainly want to work on that passing game. The question mark for this football team hadn't been very good, and the focus has also not been very good. Jared Lee now. Russell Shepard outside. And Shepard down to the 40, a gain of 13. As you see, they get the football right back into their playmaker's hands, Russell Shepard, and you see him hurrying up to the, up to the line of scrimmage, trying to change the pace for this football game. Shepard has been their best weapon in the ball game tonight. From the 40 on first and 10. Lee over the middle. Tolliver, good move to the 25 and down to the 24. Terrence Tolliver. Six catches, 111 yards against Florida, and of course the big one, the touchdown from Lee to finish the Gators. He also had a great catch and run to set that score up. He did, and he's doing a great job this year of running with the football after he catches it, and you see LSU stagnant on offense so far, come out this drive, get the ball, last two plays, there are two big time playmakers on the outside. From the 19, first and 10. Ridley bounces it outside. Caught from behind and dropped there. Daryl Jenkins, a great tackle. The junior free safety. You see Daryl Jenkins right here. As you mentioned, the junior free safety. He's fast, big time playmaker for this defense. Very strong guy too, Rich. As you see, he squats 630 pounds in the weight room. So he can absolutely run and come with a lot of physicality when he makes tackles. Ridley is out. Michael Ford is in. In the backfield with Lee. And second and eight. Ford. Cuts back inside. Ford to the 15. Fights his way inside the 10 and down to the eight. It is a final. South Carolina goes down. And Kentucky comes from behind a 31 28 win and obviously with the BCS standings coming out tomorrow hold on wait a minute I gotta I gotta get Tim under control up here I'm trying to call my nerves I mean I was worried death about that great victory for the Wildcats Ridley's back in and he's down to the six yard line but a lot of college teams certainly looking at the top 20 to see what happens earlier this afternoon Texas beat Nebraska and for LSU, they're sitting at number nine. They're on top, but they aren't going to get any style points so far. A six-point lead over McNeese State. 
Second and goal from the six. Ford is in. Touchdown. Michael Ford stretches the lead. And once again, it feels like to me, when Jared Lee gets into the football game, the team just has a different tempo about him. And you can see, you just felt on that drive when he came in that they were going to go down and score. You can see a little more energy throughout the offense and just a little more confidence goes throughout that huddle when he's in it. There is a Tiger that is down. And it's Joseph Barksdale, one of the best offensive tackles in the SEC. And that would be a huge blow for this LSU offense. Barksdale is just a powerful run blocker, one of their best offensive linemen that they have. Let's take a look at his knee and see if we can get a uh, – kind of came in there late, but it looks like he's grasping his knee. Hope it's nothing serious for that young man. Good question because this injury has allowed us to look at the replay and you wonder if the replay official is taking a peek at it as well. From that angle you can't tell if the ball has crossed the goal. Knee down. Knee down. It looks like the ball is just a tad short right there so let's have to take a look at that and see, see if he actually crossed the plane. So far, no indication that they're reviewing it. And the big man, 6'6", 318. That's a lot of man. You want squats? He squats 704 pounds. <laughs> an LSU record. Jasper for the extra point. And he pushed it and missed it. And the special teams issues for LSU continue. There's a look at Michael Ford who scored the touchdown. 53 yards, six plays. And it's, I mean, there's 92,000 here. But most of them are rather quiet and stunned. And I think you, you see it on Les Miles' face. Not happy with a 22-10 lead over McNeese State. No, and it's certainly not what you expect when you think of a Saturday night game in Death Valley. You think the crowd, the noise, the intensity. McNeese State just took the crowd right out of this football game, and it's been very, very quiet in here, which is something that's very unusual in this stadium. So it's 22-10, and McNeese State will get the football back. 92,576. Derek Helton for your support of Tiger football. will kick it off. Biggest lead of the ball game for LSU. McNeese State came out and took a 7-0 lead, then had a 10-7 lead. Bronson at the 15, swallowed up at the 24. Tonight's Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff leaders. Some of the guys with the right stuff. The leading ball carrier for the Cowboys, Andre Anderson with 35 yards. Ridley and Shepard, the best weapons for the Tigers. Marquinhos. All right, let's see if McNeese State can move the football. They were able to move the chains early in the first quarter. Since then, not a whole lot of offense. Stroud throws it away. We had a, a bootleg call there, but let's see what the call is. Was he outside the tackle box? Ken Williamson, our referee. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty is declined. 
second down. So a second down and 10. You just see mistakes right here by this McNeese State offense. Number 89, Cordy, Corday Clark is tight end on the bootleg right there. It was supposed to release out into the flat for his little check down. He didn't have that there. Cody, Corday Clark stayed in the block, so it forced Cody Stroud to throw the football away. Stroud looking at a second and 10. From his 24, Blitz is coming. Stands in top. Good coverage and incomplete. Ronnie Vinson on the coverage of Corday Clark. You see the coverage by this LSU defense. They have a blitz on, and it's just man-to-man -man coverage. And at some point, you're going to be asked to beat that man-to-man -man coverage if you want to make big plays. Ryan Baker putting the pressure on Cody Stroud. Baker along with Shepard and Francois, very talented linebackers for LSU. Stroud, a redshirt freshman, has had a couple of drops. Has thrown a touchdown pass. Here comes that blitz. It's tipped and caught. Young got the first down. 40 out to the 43-yard line. That is a big third down conversion for McNeese State. Huge first down conversion for McNeese State and a great call by head coach Matt Viator. As you expect the blitz right here, the best thing to do against the blitz is let them all come to you and dump it over their head. LSU actually tips that pass right there, but a good job staying with it, getting the offensive line out in front and converting a huge first down for this McNeese State offense. They threw into the blitz and they threw away from Patrick Peterson. They have rarely gone to Peterson's side of the field. Peterson, the corner number seven, bottom of your screen for LSU, one of the best lockdown cover men in the country. Anderson across the 45 to the 46. Anderson. We've been asking you all night on our Wendy's texted in. Biggest uh, regular season win under Les Miles. Was it last week? You can uh, send your choice to South 76884. Data rates may apply. <laughs> Three yard pickup. Second and seven. Stroud. Anderson runs smack dab into Kelvin Shepard. And that's not a good thing. Yeah, you never want to run into Kelvin Shepard. This guy is number two in the SEC in tackles so far this season. Just a tackling machine for that LSU defense. 6'3", 240, Stone Mountain, Georgia. And that's not a good sign either. Anderson limping to the sideline. Ronaldo Young in the backfield with Stroud. Tried to force it, and it's incomplete. Morris Claiborne. Now, when you throw away from Patrick Peterson, you're throwing at Morris Claiborne. And Morris Claiborne has responded so far this year. You know, he knows that he's going to get a lot of work, like you said, Rick, because a lot of teams or every team's going to go away from Patrick Peterson. He's responded with three interceptions so far to lead this LSU Tiger defense. And Peterson is deep now for this Ben Bourgeois punt. A low liner. And that's perfect for McNeese State. No return from Patrick Peterson. Number nine, LSU on top, 22-10. Our old Charlie fans of the game. It's hard to choose among 92,000, <laughs> but you got some that guy from Lake like Charles. You've got some McNeese State. In fact, at our hotel today, we saw a lot of conflicted fans. We saw fans wearing McNeese hats and LSU shirts. We did, and, and, and two very, very good programs here. Obviously, LSU being an elite program in the country, but McNeese State, a great team in their own right, in their division, their conference. They, they've had a lot of success, and they have came in here, and they've been gamers so far in this tough atmosphere here at LSU. Are you see Jordan Jefferson is in now, the tale of two quarterbacks tonight. The offense has run well under Jarrett Lee, not so much Jefferson, and he'll pitch it wide to Shepard who is out of bounds. Jeremy Pilot made the stop. Is it that they played 
I guess, one better than the other, or is this defense that uh, McNeese State has thrown out there, is it suited for one quarterback over the other? Is, is it better for Lee than it is for Jefferson? Well, this is an aggressive defense. They're getting a lot of guys in the box, and I think that's why you haven't seen Jordan Jefferson make the plays with his legs, and vice versa, you've seen Jared Lee throwing the football well. Richard Murphy to the 25. And I guess the, the, the next step is the question. LSU is number nine in the country. They are 6-0. They're 4-0 in the SEC. And this two-quarterback deal has worked pretty well up until now. Mm -hmm. What happens if one starts playing considerably better than the other? Well, I think that would be a great thing for this football team. You know, I don't think Les Miles would like anything more than for one of these guys to step up and just be the unquestioned leader they can count on week in and week out for this team. Jefferson, and again, McNeese State's defense, Seth Thomas, who's been making plays all night, and you can hear the crowd booing LSU right now. It's just been a tough start, you know, for Jordan Jefferson in this football game, but you look out here, they're throwing the quick swing pass, but Russell Shepard, number 10, misses his block right here on number 34, and, and, and just able to break that up in the backfield before it even gets started. Seth Thomas, number eight, makes the play. You see Russell Shepard getting talked to by his coach a little there. you got to get that block for your fellow wide receiver. Derek Helton hunts it away, and it's a booming kick. It's touched. It's loose. It may have rolled out of bounds. Young. Ronaldo Young, the freshman return man, was back there, and he may be hurt. Inside the 20. McNeese State, I believe, is going to hold on to the football, but Young is in considerable pain. And I don't know how many more running backs they have left on this football team. If Ronaldo Young goes down, they're already down to their third-string guy, Andre Anderson. They had so many injuries at that position. This would just be a huge blow to this McNeese State offense. You can see the ball right there on the stripe, out of bounds. is shaking up the play. And so McNeese State is going to hold on to the football, but you're right. You see him just bobble that ball. Tough catch over the shoulder right there. And I think he assumed that that ball would just go out of bounds, but LSU doing a nice job of hustling down and almost recovering this thing before it hits the chalk. Marcus Willits out with a knee injury. Champlin Babin, an ankle injury. We saw Andre Anderson limping to the sideline, and now Ronaldo Young. Blair Broussard is the fifth running back on the depth chart for McNeese State. And this is, you know, never a good sign right here when they bring out the air cast right here to place that on a young man. You hate to see that for, for any player in the country on any team, and it's just a very unfortunate situation for that young man, Ronaldo Young. And we hope that the young man is okay. Andre Anderson has come out onto the field, so it looks like Anderson is back in business, the transfer from Michigan State. Well, for McNeese State, they are at two and three. They've won three of the last four Southland Conference titles, and they can still win the title again this year. Yeah, they sure can. And if you look back to their game last week against Stephen F. Austin, they had a chance to win that. They were one first down away from winning that football game if they would convert it. But unfortunately for them, they weren't able to do that. Gave the football back to Stephen F. Austin, who went down and scored and won that football game 32-27. to Or that would have been a huge win for McNeese State. Stephen F. Austin, the uh, fifth-ranked team in the FCS division. Of course, I think whenever you, you think about an FCS team taking on a, an FBS team used to be Division One and Division One AA. You think about the great win by App State mm -hmm. on the road against Michigan. And you know, you also look at a, a Jacksonville State who was able to come in the first game this year and beat Ole Miss at Ole Miss. And you know, it's happening a lot. You know, and App State kind of broke the ice with that thing where the you know the underdogs come in and beat an SEC team or a you know a Division One team, and it's uh, it's just you see it a lot nowadays. And this is a tough to watch as Ronaldo Young, the freshman, is taken from the field. So the Cowboys have now lost three running backs 
Willits, Fabin, and now Young. We said there's a lot of LSU fans in Lake Charles. There's a lot of McNeese State fans here in Baton Rouge. Yeah, there sure are. And, you know, and this is a good quality football team. Like you said, and these two teams are located only a couple hours apart, so certainly they both have fan base that, that root, for, root for both teams. And this is the first time they've ever met. Such an unfortunate situation, Ronaldo Young. That's a tough deal when you're on the sidelines as his teammate and you see one of your buddies, your teammates, getting carted off like that, knowing it could be his season-ending uh, injury right there. He just hearts go out to him and hope he, hope he recovers well. Stroud gives it to Anderson. You know, the other story we haven't told tonight is the reason that Cody Stroud is playing is Jacob Bauer, their senior quarterback, had a concussion last week against Stephen F. Austin. Right, and Jacob Bauer is a good football player. He's a big kid who has a very strong arm and someone that they would have loved to have in this football game going against this LSU defense. But like you said, unfortunately, he had the concussion last week, and but Cody Stroud stepped up nice in his place and, and played his role very well. Stroud led him on two big touchdown drives last week against Stephen F. Austin. He has a touchdown pass tonight here against LSU. And he's faced with second down and eight. Locks that one up. Juggled and caught at the 37. Damian Dixon, who caught the touchdown pass from Stroud, made a nice catch, a 20-yard pickup. And that's what you want to see out of this McNeese State offense. This is one of the first times that they took a shot down the field of any distance. You know, they, they were worried coming into the football game, could they actually even drop back and throw the football down the field as quick as LSU gets pressure on the quarterback. But that time, they were able to move the pocket, change the launch point for the quarterback to get him outside of containment and able to throw the football down the field. They may be reviewing this, or is LSU going to call a timeout? Timeout. LSU. There's your answer. Les Miles wants to talk it over, and Matt Viator will chat with his redshirt freshman. Every week, we give you a Nissan Heisman update. Tim Couch, all yours. Well, no surprise here for me. It's all quarterbacks, but you see Kellen Moore from Boise State just putting up huge numbers, got his team undefeated. And then you go to Ryan Mallett, who had the concussion today and that loss to Auburn, certainly one of the most talented quarterbacks in all of college football. And then we get to Terrell Pryor on the number one team in the country, Ohio State, putting it up with his arms and his legs, 15 touchdowns on the season. And then we get to Superman, Cameron Newton, who's just done it all for Auburn. This guy has made such a difference in that football team, leading the SEC. DC and Russian were also one of the top passers in the conference. Just does it all for his football team. You see the day that he had 189 yards rushing? Unbelievable. And he had almost 200 yards rushing last week at Kentucky. LSU burned a timeout. Under a minute left, third quarter. McNeese State hanging in there, down 12. Stroud gives to Anderson. Breaks one tackle. Hit at the 40 and spills ahead to the 42. The transfer from Michigan State. Chancey Aguilleri. Yeah, Chancey Aguilleri had a chance to make that play in the backfield, but Andre Anderson was able to shake loose and get a nice little game there to move the chains and get it up to second and five. Yeah. Second down. So it's second down and five. Final seconds melting away. Third quarter at Baton Rouge. Anderson again. Nice hole. Breaks loose. Midfield. Inside the 40. Down to the 38. Tyron Matthew made the stop. 20-yard pickup by Andre Anderson. Just good, tough running right there. They've been consistent with this running game. They hadn't given up on it, even though they're down in the football game. They continue to put the football in the belly of Andre Anderson, and he's responding. McNeese State just won't go away. Number nine, LSU, at home on top, but just 22-10. LSU trying to rally themselves here in the fourth quarter. Certainly not the effort most expected out of the number nine team in the country. You can see the numbers in a 22-10 LSU lead. 
McNeese State is on the move in LSU territory at the 38 as we start the fourth quarter. Anderson enveloped at the 37. Ball's loose down the field. Shepard with it. He's 15. He's in. No signal yet. I think it's a touchdown. It looked like the play had stopped. Shepard certainly didn't stop until he was in the end zone. He didn't, and Andre Anderson is pointing to his coach on the sideline that his knee was down. We'll take a look here and see if we can see when that ball came out. It looks like the ball came out, but I think that Kelvin Shepard... But Shepard's down. Shepard's knee is also down. With good point there, Rich. So that ball will come back, at least, but I think it will be LSU's football. And they are reviewing the play. So a lot to look at. It looked like the strip came before Anderson was down, but obviously Shepard was down, though he's probably hoping they don't see that. <laughs> He'd rather have the 60-yard touchdown. Not a member of the uh, officials that will review that play. <laughs> a little upset with that call. He could he could do without that one. Here's another look. Let's see if we can see exactly when this football comes out. Right there, Kelvin Shepard actually strips the football and takes it right away from him. But it's going to be a fumble. But Shepard is down. I think it'll be LSU's ball right there. You see, as Shepard gets possession of the ball, his knee is down right there, and that ball will come back to that point on the field. Unfortunately, on that replay, look, you don't get a clear look at Anderson's knees. When the strip happens, his knees are blocked on that shot. Right. It, it looked like he was still up running the football when Shepard come in and made contact with him. And we'll see if we can find another angle on that. One that might uh, give us a look at Anderson's knees. Les Miles is, uh, is accustomed to winning these reviews. Here we have it from a different angle. See if we can see when this ball pops out as Shepard comes in, makes the hit. Looks like that ball is out. He's on, actually on top of an LSU defender. His knees actually never really did get to the ground, so it uh, looks like a pretty clear fumble to me. Yeah, that's a great look. Nice work in the truck. And the LSU is going to get the football. But it's going to be back down in their own territory. And I think that's really what the delay is here with the review is they're probably figuring out where to spot this football, where Shepard was down after he stripped and, and recovered that fumble, where they need to go back and mark this ball at. A rare mistake by McNeese State on a night where they have not made mistakes. They haven't. That's really the first one that they've given away to LSU. Cody Stroud has protected the football. Anderson had a lot of carries, but he's been very good at protecting the ball right there but until that point. So we'll see how bad this hurts them and see if LSU can capitalize offensively. Now you can see Shepard in the bottom of the screen. <laughs> They're asking him, right. was your knee down? And he, he say, He's saying, yeah, but I hope they don't see it. <laughs> Still a, a great play by a guy that could be an All-American, one of the best linebackers certainly in the SEC. And you, you put him behind Nevis, you put Peterson and Claiborne on the corners, and uh, added up, you've got uh, the number one ranked defense statistically in the SEC, fifth in the nation. Yeah, you sure do, and and you got a lot of guys as you look at that defense who's going to be playing on Sundays and are going to be very very high draft picks off that defense. I think that's one of the most impressive things tonight about McNeese State. You and I had a chance to go down on the field and watch both teams go through their warm-ups. LSU is enormous and lightning quick. McNeese State vastly undersized in this one, but they haven't played like it. They haven't, and that's credit to their coaching staff. Matt Viator has done a great job, not only in this game, but throughout his career there at McNeese State. And he gets his football teams ready to play. Technique very fundamentally sound. Here's the goal. After 
further review, the ball was fumbled and recovered by the LSU player. However, the player was down at the 39-yard line. It will be the LSU ball, first and 10. Please put 14-47 on the game clock. Nice job by the officials and the replay official. Nice job. Kelvin's not happy about it, but, uh, you know, he'll take the, he'll take the strip uh, fumble recovery right there. He just didn't get his touchdown, but uh, excellent play by Kelvin Shepard. And LSU will get the football. And they're going to mark this at the 39-yard line, LSU's 39-yard line. You've just joined us. McNeese State came out and uh, smacked number nine LSU in the mouth, up 7 to nothing, and took a 10-7 lead. The Tigers are up 22-10, but McNeese State just won't go away. And an opportunity right here with, with Jarrett Lee in the football game. You, they've been running the football well the last couple of drives. I wouldn't be surprised if they do some play action and try to work it down the field to Terrence Tolliver, who they hadn't used very much tonight. You're right. Shepard has been the main weapon. Got to have the official LSU ball in the game. They had the uh, McNeese State ball. <laughs> Each quarterback wants his own football. You can attest to that. There's your play action. There's your deep throw. There's Tolliver, and he's tripped. No flag. Well, I just had a feeling that the way they've been running the football, that they would do a little play action right here and try to get it down the field to Terrence Solver, who's got single coverage out there, and they just hadn't taken many shots to him down the field. And at some point, you know, they, they do this every game, and you try to look like maybe a little pass interference, a little early, early bumping going on there. Flag down on the bubble screen to Shepard. And this game has come to a crawling uh, pace now after the long review. And some laundry on the field. Illegal shift on the offense, number 80. The player was not set. The penalty's declined. Third down. And it's third down and 10. This defense, Lark Hebert, the defensive coordinator for McNeese State, has to be very proud of the way his team has played here. Yeah, certainly so. He's, he's brought his 4-2-5 defense here against this mighty LSU Tiger offense and you know they played well they've responded they've they've tackled well they've flown to the football and they've done an excellent job here tonight Lee on third down and 10 here comes a blitz it's picked up Shepard on the inside screen is loose he's 30 Shepard 20 caught from behind run out of bounds Flag down back at the 40-yard line of LSU. And this one may be coming back. Play went to the 18-yard line. 43 yards on the reception and run. Here's the call. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense, number 64. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. If that pass is completed across the line of scrimmage, you cannot be a lineman downfield blocking. Right, let's take a look and see where he catches this football. You see the little slip screen underneath right there. Yeah, 64 is 64 right here. P.J. Lonergan. P.J. Lonergan, as you see, it looks like like he's behind the line of scrimmage to me. I'm not sure exactly from that angle how, where it was, but uh, nonetheless, play comes back and LSU gave the big play. Third down, 15. Lee running out of time. Caught, drops at the 27. Desmond Lighton, the junior out of Monroe, Louisiana. And Desmond Lighton, one of the best defensive players on that McNeese State team. He's very okay. fast upside, he's undersized for a defensive lineman. As you can see, he's only 250 pounds, but he gets it done. He's very fast and explosive, puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Both LSU quarterbacks right now are struggling. Helton 
Bounces out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Number nine LSU is on top, but by only 12 over McNeese State. The SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by ZMAX, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, by Geico, by Wendy's, and by Nissan. In Baton Rouge tonight, two coaches with two very different feelings right now. Matt Viator, pretty happy with the way his Cowboys have competed against number nine, and you can see Les Miles is hot right now. LSU is up by only 12. We're in the fourth quarter. McNeese State playing with a second string red shirt freshman quarterback with the ball. Stroud to the sidelines, overthrows, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Morris Claiborne. Claiborne brings it back to the 32. <laughs> 29 yards on the return. See Morris Claiborne add to his stats, another interception on the season, but this is just miscommunication with Cody Stroud, his wide receiver. Wide receiver runs a little curl route right there. Obviously, Cody Stroud expecting him to take it up the sideline on the fade route, but just mis miscommunication and it results in a turnover. Fourth interception for Claiborne on the season. And now the Tigers have Jordan Jefferson back in there. Ford, who scored earlier. Tim Couch, neither quarterback has played well here in the second half. I think Jarrett Lee had a better first half. I think one of Les Miles' goals coming into this ball game was more consistent play from both of his quarterbacks. It was, and, and they haven't really been that way so far this game. And the question mark of this football team looking at the big picture of it is, can they win a national title? Well, it depends on if these quarterbacks can get the football in the hands of those playmakers. And right now, I'm not sure if they're capable of doing that in a big time game. Second and six. Ford again. Hit. Spins forward and is close to the first down. Good second effort by Michael Ford. All right, to compare the two, Lee, 9 of 14, 75 yards. Jefferson, 4 of 7, 28 yards. With what Jefferson has lacked is the uh, big pickups on the ground, something that's been part of his game this year. He hasn't. We haven't seen him really run the football at all tonight, and they've tried a few times to get him on the corner, some sprint out passes, and let him break containment and throw the football, but really nothing with his legs in the ground game. Where inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line, that one almost was six. Malcolm Bronson just got an ankle and brought him down. We've seen Michael Ford. We've seen Spencer Ware. We've seen Richard Murphy. We saw Stephen Ridley at the tailback spot to start the ball game in most of the first half. Ware is in there right now. And he'll get it again. Up the gut. Nice stop. Desmond Lighton first to hit him. This is what LSU is known for. It's just power running game in between the tackles. They use their big offensive lineman Barksdale, and they got Longerhorn and then Hurst up there. They're three power run blockers. They like to run the football downhill, and this is the type. Of, this is the way they play. Their physical offensive line with physical running backs. But just 112 yards on the ground right now for LSU. You would expect more with this mismatch. Ford is hitting the backfield. And McNeese State just keeps coming. Good play on the initial contact by Ford Smezny. And this is an area of the field where you would think that they would use Jordan Jefferson's legs a little more, whether in the sprint out pass game or, or put him in the shotgun and let him run the zone read play where he can pull, give it to the running back or read the defensive end, crash and pull it and try to get around the corner. So we'll see what they come with here on third and ten. Third down, 10. Ball at the 14. Jefferson, blitz coming over the middle. Oh, what a hit. Shepard.
Stafford caught it. Bronson almost separated him in the football. Malcolm Bronson, the sophomore strong safety. Malcolm Bronson is a heck of a football player for this McNeese State defense. He was first team all SLC last year, and you can see why. Making aggressive tackles right on the spot to stop Russell Shepard in his tracks. Josh Jasper is on for this field goal. It's a 31-yard attempt. Earlier tonight, he missed an extra point, the first one he has missed in his career here at LSU. Also has missed a field goal. From 32, he missed. This one from 31 is true. And so Josh Jasper makes it 25-10 LSU. Vote for that one, Tim. Any uh, any concerns? That that left Smiles' biggest regular season win? No, I think you go with that one. Like I said earlier, it's you know what he's done for me lately in college football, and that's what fans remember the most is that big win against Florida last week. Bernardo Henry with the return. He's out to the 19. Let's check in with Jen Hildreth. Rich, you mentioned LSU's inability to run the ball as effectively as they'd like to. Part of the reason their workhorse, Stephen Ridley, is out of this game. You guys saw him earlier come off the field holding his left shoulder. He initially got some extra padding put on that shoulder, and then he came off and had to get ice put on both shoulders. Trainer Jack Marucci telling me they are holding him out for precautionary measures for the rest of this game. Hey, Jen, we've seen the crowd here of 92,000 essentially taken out of this game, even though LSU is up. What are the sidelines like? What's LSU's sideline? like and what is a McNeese State sideline like? Well, last I was over on McNeese's sideline. I didn't see anybody sitting on the bench. There was a lot of excitement over there, at least to start this half. And now it just it's kind of feels the same, Rich. There's not a lot of energy anywhere you look down here. That's number 14. Five-yard penalty. It's a five-yard penalty on McNeese down. State. 25-10 LSU. Tim Couch in the big picture. Does LSU not blowing out McNeese State when it uh, with the BCS coming out, style points for the polls and all of that, how does uh, this game affect that? Well, I mean, maybe a little bit, but as we'll see how this game plays out. Still nine and a half minutes left in this game for LSU to grow their lead, so we'll, we'll see how it finishes up. Stroud throws a, a fastball low and outside, and a, uh, a nice try by Devontae Edmondson, and it's incomplete. He couldn't scoop it. Lamine Barrow on the coverage. Matt Viador, the head coach at McNeese State. Cowboys have yet to really stretch the field. They haven't. They're going to have to take a shot at it at some point here, down 25 to 10. Blitz comes, will swing pass to Anderson. Has a block, cuts it across the 20. Nice move by Anderson. He's a quality running back and a good weapon out of the backfield on that catch. He sure is, and, he, and he's versatile to us, what I like about him. You know, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator at LSU, told us coming in he was worried about Andre Anderson, and rightfully so. He's been very good on the ground running the football. He's caught some passes on some screens for some big games. So Andre Anderson, very versatile running back. Here's John Chavis, his second year as the defensive coordinator here at LSU. A great run, as we told you about, at Tennessee. Anderson was just short of that first down, so third down and two in the 27. Anderson again, and he busts loose the 35. Open field tackle, and a nice one there by Craig Lawson. Anderson carried the ball. And that prevented a really Lawson. big gain by Andre Anderson. Yep. Andre Anderson just continued to run the football hard as you see just getting up in there bouncing it to the outside finding the lane and almost turned that corner for even a bigger game. Cowboys play without two of their running backs Marcus Willits, Champlin Babin. They have lost Ronaldo Young to an injury so Anderson carrying the load here in the second half. Stroud lobs it up and it's incomplete. Good coverage on the corner by Tyron Matthew. You know, there's a shot we were talking about down the sideline, but uh, unable to connect on it, but at least that may loosen up this LSU defense just a little bit. Matthew getting some time, Ron Brooks getting some time. We haven't seen Patrick Peterson now for three series. Second down, 10th, 38-yard line. Morris Claiborne also getting some time off. 
But the McNeese State would like nothing better than to take it down the field, stick it in the end zone, and hang around a little bit longer. They have hung in a lot longer than anyone has expected tonight. Stroud on second and ten over the middle, Royal. And he has stood up at the 44. Justin Macklin made the hit. We see him finding Chris Rowe, who had a big week last week against Stephen F. Austin. Seven catches in that game for 76 yards. So obviously one of the go-to guys on this McNeese State offense. Third down and five. Clark in motion. Stroud throws over the blitz. Anderson again. It's a play that has worked, and Anderson is inside LSU territory to the 44. They haven't stretched the field, Tim, but when LSU has blitzed, Stroud has made the correct decisions. They have, and, and Matt Viator has made the correct call. They they have this little play on this drive working for them. This is the second time that they've called that. They've dialed it up, and it's worked for them successfully both times. Clock continues to roll. Seven minutes left. Ball game. Stroud. Little screen to the side. Spencer. A gain of maybe two. You've got a red shirt freshman here in Cody Stroud, quarterback in McNeese State. And as we see the, the second string defense, some of the guys coming in, Matthew. Brooks, especially the linebacking core. You got a lot of freshmen on that side of the ball for LSU. You do, and they're excited about these young freshmen. These these kids are talented football players, and they're going to be here for a long time. And this John Chavis defense, so he's got a lot of room to grow and learn from guys like Kelvin Shepard and Drake Nevis, and, and turn into being a good football players for LSU one day. That's a rare carry by Stroud. <laughs> How about this? Florida has lost three in a row. Mississippi State on the road beats the Gators. Man, what a win for Dan Mullen and that Mississippi State Bulldog team. Dan Mullen was the offensive coordinator for those glory years at Florida with Tim Tebow and the national championships. Now he goes to Mississippi State and he comes back and, and is able to beat his mentor Urban Meyer there in, in Gainesville. Just a great win and congratulations to that Mississippi State Bulldog team. We've seen missed field goals here tonight. Florida missed a 42-yarder to tie that one at the end. And McNeese State is going to call a timeout on third down and six. 5.33 left here in the fourth with McNeese State on the move. LSU up 25-10. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. Number nine, LSU on top, 25-10. McNeese State, though, has put up quite a fight and continues to do so. This last play, Cody Stroud hitting Corday Clark, the senior tight end out of Baton Rouge. Kelvin Shepard standing around thinking to himself, hey, you young freshmen out there, you got to play some defense. First and ten. LSU 33, Stroud incomplete. You see Kelvin Shepard there just congratulating his guys. You don't want to give up any points. You know, even though the, the freshmen are in there, the backups are in there, he still wants these guys to go out and continue to do what this LSU defense is known for, and that's keeping people out of the end zone. 25-10, Matt Viator, the head coach at McNeese State. Looking at second down and ten. Cody Stroud. Stands in. And a great hit coming up from the backfield. Brandon Taylor with the hit. Speaking of hits, this was the big one. Our sprint epic play. Jace Peterson, Jeremy Pilot recovered. And then right back to work, Cody Stroud hitting Damian Dixon 
And that, Tim, set the tone for the entire night. It sure did. And at that point, you thought McNeese State was going to be in this thing and have an opportunity. But uh, you know, LSU, a great football team, just continue to pull the way as the game moves on. McNeese State still has been unable to throw the ball downfield. Yeah, haven't really taken any shots. There's another opportunity to work the middle of the field. Stroud, his receiver fell at the 21-yard line, and it's incomplete. Deontay Spencer was the intended receiver. Four sixteen left in this one, and if you're McNeese State now, it's fourth down and eight. You might as well go for it. Yeah, you have to go for it at this point. 25 to 10, four minutes to go in the football game. You got to take a chance here and keep your offense out on the field. You got to come away from this drive with some points. On fourth and nine, Stroud over the middle. It's caught, but that's going to be short of the first down. And actually, it hit the ground, so it's incomplete. Devante Edmondson and Morris Claiborne came back in to break that one up. LSU gets the ball when we get back. Some stunning results from the SEC today and tonight. This one with LSU on top. And it looks like the Tigers are going to win this one. But it doesn't get much easier at Auburn. That's next week. Oh, yeah, Alabama comes to town on the 6th. Always fun when Nick Saban comes back to Baton Rouge. Ole Miss coming in on the 20th. And if that wasn't enough, how about Ryan Mallett? Let's hope he's okay. LSU traveling to Arkansas to finish things off. What a wild day in the conference with South Carolina, Florida going down, Georgia winning big over Vanderbilt. Michael Ford with the carry. We saw Stephen Ridley in the first half. There's a look at him now, and, and certainly they hope that he's healthy next week for that matchup against Auburn. Yeah, certainly they hope he's healthy and ready to go for that matchup. Uh, you know, not a huge night on the ground for him, only 46 yards, but he did have a couple touchdowns, and, you know, he's the workhorse for this football team, so hopefully next week he'll be fresh and ready to go for that Auburn game. Second down and three. LSU running clock right now. On second down and three. Lee on the pitch and it's Ford straight ahead. First down. Our Bass Pro Shop catch of the game. Remember the great catch Terrence Tolliver made last week in the win over Florida? Look at this one. <laughs> one hand, it was ruled an incompletion. Then they looked at it. I think both officials in real time probably said there's no way he makes that catch. Yeah, that's some uh, pretty unbelievable athleticism shown right there by Terrence Tolliver, not only to catch the football, but to have the wherewithal to tap that foot and make it a completion. I think this is a pretty classy thing for Les Miles here. Not throwing it up. Content to just run clock right now. Not worried about style points. And maybe a, a tip of the cap to McNeese State, who played so well here tonight. You have to, to like what you've seen from the redshirt freshman quarterback, Cody Stroud. He came in here with confidence. Yeah, they're going to leave with a loss. But I think they've impressed a lot of people. I think they certainly have. And, and Cody Stroud was pretty much everything that they told us he would be coming into this game. They said he was a, a calm, cool customer. The atmosphere, the environment here at Death Valley would not rattle him. And he certainly didn't look rattled. He sat there in the pocket with poise. He led his football team. You know, not a huge night statistically, but he did what was asked of him. Not turn the football over too many times and didn't put his team in too many bad situations. Second down and six. And a nice pickup inside McNeese territory. Spencer Ware down to the 37-yard line. Our Polaris hardest-working player. We're going to give it to the LSU defense. So it's players per uh, plural. 
LSU's defense, I think if Les Miles comes out of this one, Tim, his defense has to make him feel good. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's uh, you know only 10 points allowed, and, and all those were points off turnovers. The one touchdown that McNeese State got today was off the fumble on the five-yard line from Jordan Jefferson, so kind of an unfair situation for the defense there. And then, obviously, on the punt where it hit the LSU player, and they went down and got a field goal. So, overall, pretty good night for this LSU defense. Busting loose is Ford, and he's going to score. And LSU tacks on a score with a minute 12 left. 36 yards. Michael Ford, his second touchdown of the night. But I like that. I like the fact that Les Miles didn't come out and throw it up. He kept it on the ground. Wasn't going to rub it in, and Ford popped one. I totally agree, Rich. And classy move by Les Miles. And as you can see, the, just the, the pounding that this big physical offensive line from LSU just all night just run blocking, run blocking, run blocking. Now you see it wearing on that McNeese State defensive line, and Michael Ford able to break a big one. All right, now. Les Miles laid out what he was hoping for tonight, and we've gone through it. Special teams didn't play well tonight. Turnovers, they coughed it up. How about his quarterbacks? What do you think he goes into the Auburn week with thinking about the guys that handle the offense? You know, I, I, it's, it's tough to say that one or the other really, you know, when Jarrett Lee was in, especially in the first half, he played well. He led his team on two touchdown drives. But, you know, the second half, both of them kind of looked really uh, sloppy to me and just didn't have, you know, the rhythm in the offense that you would want out of your quarterbacks in a game like this. So moving forward, looking forward to the big picture in these games they have coming up. I think, you know, Jarrett Lee gives them the best opportunity to make plays in the passing game and, and win big games for them. How much of that is on the quarterback, the fact that the offense didn't move? Is it, is it squarely on the quarterback? Well, I think so when you look at what LSU has to work with. You know, playmakers on the outside, Terrence Tolliver and Russell Shepard, running game with all these running backs, Michael Ford, Stephen Ridley, Richard Murphy, the stable of running backs they have here, so, and a great offensive line. So I think, to me, it does come down to the quarterback just getting it done and making plays because all the pieces are in place for the quarterback to be successful here at LSU. Of course, the McNeese State defense might say well, they had a little hand in it, and too. Cer and certainly you do. They have to, you have to tip their hat to that McNeese State defense, the 4-2-5 pressure-based defense they run, came in here and, and gave LSU some trouble offensively. From his end zone, Bernard Henry, and Henry is out across the 20 to the 22-yard line. So a minute left in this one. <laughs> what a wild day in the SEC today with uh, all the points in that Auburn-Arkansas game, the loss by Florida at home to Mississippi State. Kentucky over South Carolina. How about that comeback? <laughs> yeah, you know I'm not going to let you forget about that one. 65-43, Auburn beat Arkansas. And you're right, Kentucky 31-28 over South Carolina. And great news for SEC fans of all teams, Ohio State beaten by Wisconsin. So, <laughs> great timing. And you remember back to 2007 when Les Miles and LSU won a national championship. They won it with two losses, and it was about this time of that season where every week either the number one or the number two team got knocked off. It sure was. And, you know, it's, it's easy to sit here and speculate halfway through the season of who's going to be in the championship game, who's not going to be in it. But there's a lot of football left to be played. As we saw today, you can't really project and look ahead because, especially in the SEC, on any given week, any team can upset you. Anderson Final seconds. And that man has to be proud the way his team has played. Under man, a lot of injuries for McNeese State. But Mike, Matt Viator and McNeese State came into Death Valley and uh, led much of that first half against number nine, LSU. And so, 